It's happening, guys. They finally did it. The new Toy Story game has been announced. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that shit, right? <laughs> what is up, guys? Welcome to the podcast. Um, we don't have a name for this yet, do we? No, we don't. We're working on that, but we're going to be playing games in the background when we do these because it's a little bit easier for us. It's more natural to how we normally talk about games anyway. So, yeah, there's nothing big going on in gaming news this week, so it's going to be kind of a slow one, but we'll see what happens throughout yeah, the course of this episode. We can do. See what we can make of it. So, what's uh, what's big on your mind, Mac? Well, um, E3, you know, E3, E3 kind of happened this E3 week. E3 is kind of a thing that's happening this week. It should end. I think the pressers end tomorrow. I think Nintendo's is one of the last ones. Yeah. Um, we're recording this on a Monday, by the way, the Monday of E3, so... Obviously, last night was, in our opinion, to us as fanboys, the big ones that got to play to last night. Um, yeah, just just a tad bit. Just a tad bit. Um, it's also going to be the majority of this episode, so if you're like a Ubisoft fan or a Nintendo fan, I've got some bad news. Um, we will actually talk about the Switch at one point, though, so I can promise you we will talk about the Switch at one point. Um, <laughs> but other than that, you're not going to be a fan. Um, so yeah, should we just talk about Bethesda to start? Because they come alphabetically before Xbox. Uh, I was gonna say start with Microsoft first. Just get that shit over the way. Yeah, the probably. Way. Let's yeah. do Microsoft first. Microsoft okay. first. There's there's a new console. That's a new console. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. That's gotta be uh, it. New console coming out. Uh, don't have much information on it. Um. Yeah, it sounded like they just said they were they just said they were in development of a new console, but that was all they yeah, said. Yeah, it, they were just it in also development. seemed like they were. They were trying to compete with uh, PlayStation as well as with um, is either Nintendo or uh, I want to say it was just Nintendo because Nintendo has a cloud, don't they? Yeah, Nintendo has cloud, and then they have uh, obviously the Switch was a console that came out kind of between generations because yeah. like the current Xbox Ones probably came out with like I guess their competition would have been the Wii U. I mean. Which isn't really competition for those guys. But the Nintendo Switch, I think, has been a huge revolution in portable gaming and home gaming. Like, it's what you always wanted. It was the ability to take your home console with you on the road. So, I think... I don't know. If Xbox did that, that'd be... That almost sounds like what they're trying to do. Because they were talking about using a cloud service like what... Like, we've been seeing it with, like, State of Decay and Sea of Thieves. Where you yeah. could play on Xbox and on PC. And your shit was linked where you wouldn't lose progress. So... I don't know if that's what they're looking at for single player games too. That'd be kind of impressive. I think that's a uh, yeah. I think that's where they were saying they're trying to go, but uh, nothing set in stone yet. Just yeah. just just an announcement. The other big announcement of the Xbox presser, obviously, being the um, Halo Infinite. Halo Infinite. You know, no real news. Just the name and the title, and Master Chief holding his helmet, never actually seeing his face. I didn't see um uh I did not see the full presser for the I Halo thing. Um but I would assume that it was um that it was a big deal, obviously. I know uh, that people I didn't see I did not see the fanfare for it that I saw for things like like obviously Halo 4 was a big deal cuz it was the return to the Master Chief story. Yeah. After Halo 3 and Halo 3, after uh, ODST and Reach, which, by the way, I thought Reach was one of the best games I ever played. Um, come at me sideways. <laughs> come at me sideways one more time. I do. I think it was one of the best Halo games I ever played. I, um, I, I enjoyed it. I actually re-downloaded it for my Xbox a few days ago. Um, Gears of War 5, that was announced. Uh, once again, not a whole lot of information other than they're going back to where they started. Uh, so expect a shit ton of locusts. That's good news, maybe. Maybe, hopefully. Uh, new Tomb Raider, new Cuphead. I like... Uh, I gotta admit, Cuphead looks like a fun game. Although it's the, got the Dark Souls vibe of, like, you'll hate yourself after playing it. But I do think speaking, it'd be a cool game. Speaking of Dark Souls, there was a game release. There was a game announced as well, uh, Sekiro. Is it by the it people who made like, Dark Souls, or...? They it's just not the like same Dark people Souls. that made Dark Souls, but it looked like a uh, samurai version of Dark Souls, or at least the style it was. But uh, once again, with most of Microsoft shit, wasn't a whole lot of information. No, they're not. 
They're big on early, early teasers, especially at E3. Yeah, but uh, good on them for at least getting uh, 16 Xbox exclusive games. That will help them out tremendously. Yeah, because they, they made a big market. point. I mean, they admitted, I don't know if they admitted it, but a lot of people said they kind of did in a way that they weren't the number one selling. Like, PS4s had well outsold the Xbox Ones. But that the Xbox One was... They were, they were arguing that it was a more quality console and service over the PS4. Now, whether that's true or not, I don't know. I only played an Xbox One. I never played a PS4, so I'm not going to claim Same. to have an opinion. Yeah. But I haven't heard people with PS4s complain either, so... Yeah. I think that's kind of just six to one, half a dozen of the other. Yeah, and that's a... Uh... I guess that's that's about it for Microsoft. Yeah, we wouldn't... I'll be honest to you at home. We weren't really big on the Microsoft presser because the other presser of the night was <laughs> much more important. Yeah. Just, that, uh, just a tad bit. And that was the Bethesda presser. Which was funny because Todd Howard actually spoke at the Microsoft presser and spoke about Fallout 76. But yep. then literally an hour and a half later turned around and did the Bethesda presser and apparently went into much more detail, so... Which was an incredible presser, by the way. I mean, to announce that many... Okay, so I didn't write down all the games. I wrote down my highlights personally. Yeah. Which, obviously, the lead-off for that has to be Fallout 76. Because I am so hyped for that game, I can't even describe it. Um, yep. But uh, we're going to get into that in a minute. Because that's the big game. That's what we're going to talk about. Probably the majority of this project. Very true. Um, other other games include uh, Doom Eternal, the sequel to the Doom remake, and it's actually based off or based off of uh, and possibly just of Doom Two. Uh, no release date for that yet. Uh, Wolfenstein Youngblood. Uh, once again, not much information. Uh, will be co-op and single player. We do know that. It looks um, like it falls later in the timeline from the original. Like it's like it sounds like it's there. The original main character's daughters? Yeah, I want to say it is. the timeline is in the late 70s, early 80s. That's what it seems like. It definitely seemed like the 80s, based on what yeah. I saw from the trailer. Yeah, but that is slated to be released sometime in 2019. Um, All the games that they discussed, except for... Well, I don't know, was Rage 2 this year? Uh, it sounded like I thought they said Rage Two was 2019. Yeah, let me check real quick. I think uh, Fallout 76 is the only game coming out this year. No, my bad, my bad. All those, all the mobile games are coming out this year as well. But are we uh, counting as, those? <laughs> as far as the AAA uh, titles, I think only Fallout. 7, as far as the main line titles, I think only Fallout 76 is coming out this year. Yeah, Rage Two won't come out until spring of 2019 so they don't have an official release date for that yet. yeah they said second quarter so spring yeah the uh the collector's edition is available already for pre-sale andrew D okay so you remember how like every year there's like the cringe the cringe moments from e3 andrew uh, wk played the rage 2 presser last night yeah i didn't even know he was still alive <laughs> right until he came screaming up that ramp and i was like oh my god he still exists and he was super <laughs> pumped but the crowd really didn't give a shit about him. Like he like yeah, pretty true. he was singing and they cut to this guy and if I ever find this in the video I will. I don't know if they cut it or not. I gotta watch again. They just cut to this dude in the audience wearing headphones who's just slowly shaking his head back and forth. Like, <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> this is this is some bullshit. But yeah, Rage Two also announced um Uh Starfield. Uh it is there was, like, Bethesda's, nothing to go with that. Like it just There's nothing like, to go with other than it's Bethesda's first uh, original title franchise game in the past 20 years. Yeah, because, I mean, their only other title they've released that's their own is Elder Scrolls. Yeah. Because Fallout wasn't their game. We were talking about that a couple of nights ago. Yeah, those of you who do not know. Uh, those of you who don't know. <laughs> Fallout's not Bethesda's game originally. They got it. And that if you get a chance to watch that documentary, I might find a link to that because that documentary was really good. Where yeah. he just talked about it. He was like, I came back to a sticky note that said, we got you Fallout, so go ahead and make it. Have fun. World's like, best boss. World's best boss right here. Um, <laughs> I thought uh, it was cool and... that they're... Go ahead. Sorry. I was going to just go on to the next game. What were you going to say? I was going to talk about the mobile games, but you can uh, go ahead. Oh, I guess the mobile games and uh, the next game 
you know, coexist together. Elder Scrolls Six was announced. The hype is real. Uh, no idea where the setting is based at yet. If you go off by the music, it might be Skyrim again. Uh, or they could have just been filling a trailer. <laughs> yeah. Because it was, true. I mean, it was, to say a trailer was a real, is not really a trailer. It was like eight it and a half was, seconds. It was, 30 seconds. It it was, was a vine. Seconds. It was a really good vine. <laughs> um, but <laughs> It was a really good vine that got everybody off their seats. That was just, I think the, the vastness of that shot really is just them saying it will be as big and badass as you want it to be. So. Yeah. And it could be similar to Fallout 76, where, fall, where I mean, because 76 is not, like, online, Elder Scrolls Online. So I think you yeah, could see nice. a trade-over to being, that could be the version of that, where this is the direction they want to go for multiplayer, not, you know what I mean, like, what they did. Because Elder Scrolls Online is a good game. I mean, there's people who in yeah. that crowd who were hyped about the new downloadable content. Um, So, that was kind yeah, of cool. Yeah, they were going back to Black Marsh, I think. Yeah, that's what they said. It was going back to Black Marsh. And also, like, the world was going to be annihilated, which is just every Bethesda game ever, but... Um, I mean, the world, the, the game is nothing without total annihilation. Uh, I mean, they're giving us nukes... Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself about Fallout 76, but I'm just getting excited. Getting ahead of yourself. Um, we gotta talk about the, uh, the, the, the mobile game, you know? Okay, Elder so the Scrolls, Elder Scrolls uh, Legends. Is that, yeah. That's what it's called, right? Yeah. I would download that game and play it. It looked I, really fun. I went to go download it. I went to uh, pre-download it today. Already. Yeah, because you can pre-order it, right? Through the, through mm -hmm. the Play Store and through Apple Store. I might do that. I might do that on my tablet and on my phone. I like, <laughs> the, I like the town aspect that there's a, a hub place that you go to. Yeah. But I like that there was, like, the endless dungeon idea is really cool for me. Because if I was just waiting somewhere, I'd want to do an endless dungeon. But then if I had a goal, I'd want to do, like, a full dungeon. Or just a completed dungeon, so. Well, I like the, I like the way Todd announced it. And just, uh, uh you know, there's there's... It's not going to be solely on landscape mode. It's portrait mode or business meeting mode. Or, yeah, said. meeting mode. I like meeting that. Meeting mode. I, I really like that. I thought the funniest thing he said, though, was when he was like, when you got to play one-handed and everybody, like, groaned, and he was like, degenerates, fucking degenerates. <laughs> fucking degenerates. <laughs> That's a guy that knows how to work a crowd the right way. Like Todd the God, everybody. Uh, really, that's that's... That's everything up until the big, the big one, major title that the, got us uh, halfway through. So I mean, yeah, I think we're doing, yeah, <laughs> this is perfect. The, the uh, behemoth of I, the of the presser. Okay, so obviously three weeks ago. Okay, so another funny story before we get to Fallout seventy six that just that reminded me of. So Rage two accidentally. I did not know this had happened. This happened with Walmart Canada, and they joked about it at the beginning of the presser, and I didn't know what they were talking about. I had to look it up. So Walmart. Canada's website updated and showed a bunch of titles that have yet to be released. So like <laughs> Rage 2 was orderable on the Walmart Canada website. And the guy comes up and goes, and now with an announcement with our help from friends at Walmart Canada, now known for keeping <laughs> secrets. And it was no, like, no, that's pretty good. Secrets. But that's um, pretty funny. Yeah, but no, like, so a couple, like three, I think it was two or three weeks ago, the Fallout website and the Fallout Twitter turned to the please stand by image which if you're a fallout nerd means good news is coming to us god has spoken and the end times cometh and then a timer end times pop maybe not maybe just uh, end times. super excited times super excited times where the odds of us going out go down even more than they already were um <laughs> and then the next thing was the timer where it was counting down the days to the E3 event. And it released a trailer which had Take Me Home Country Roads, originally by John Denver, but done by somebody who we don't know, although I like this version a little bit more than I like the John Denver version. Same. Um, nothing against you, John Denver, if you're still out there, and if you aren't, to the heavens, bro. Um, but Could probably look that up real quick. Could probably uh, look that up real quick. <laughs> um, the trailer didn't reveal a lot, which is typical. Um, but it uh, gave John Denver's dead. He's dead. Just heads up. Yep. Fucking shame. Um, crash. Every time, man. Every time. What a way to go out. Uh, back to the happy news. So, what did you think of the original trailer? Not the new trailer, obviously, but the original trailer. The original, just please wait, and then showing a little bit of the uh, just like the vault, and then like some of those shots from outside. It was mostly cutscenes that it showed, honestly. The original trailer they dropped. Well, the original trailer, I was a bit 
skeptical, honestly. Uh, just because it, it hadn't been that long since <clears throat> Fallout 4 had been released, you know, going along the timeline of release dates for Bethesda. But um, originally, I was a little skeptical just because, you know, I didn't think they put enough time into the next Fallout game. Uh, and then I, you know, seeing majority of the shots being mostly inside the vault, I thought it was going to be uh, just another glorified uh, fall shelter, which, I mean, don't get me wrong, I played the shit out of fall shelter. Um, but yeah, I was just slightly worried about it, uh, seeing the first trailer. Yeah, that it was just gonna, it was gonna be stuck in, like, that yeah. idea. <clears throat> that was, I definitely, I mean, when you first said that, I hadn't been thinking about it, but it got me thinking about it, that it was just gonna be, like, a huge, like, strategy game. Yeah. And I was like, shit, they've lost the plot. Which, I mean, Fallout has always been sort of a strategy game, just with the amount of uh, yeah preparation you have to put into going into certain areas and stuff like that. I think um I think my big thing was, I knew that I was going to have to watch the presser, and Gavin Free actually tweeted about this, which I found interesting, which was, I think it was Andy Blanchard tweeted and said he found E3 to be the most exciting time of the year for him. Mm-hmm. And Gavin said he ha- he doesn't like pressers and that he would rather just get a write up at the end. I think I fall between the two of them. I'm not uber yeah. excited about E3, but if there's a specific game that's coming out like way back when Fallout Four was coming out, I say way back. How long it, was that? That was four years ago. So yeah, way not back when Fallout. Yeah, when Fallout Four was coming out, I think I watched, and that was really like it's specific games, which right now it just sounds like I watch it for Fallout games, and you're not wrong, but um. Yeah. <laughs> If a specific game is coming out, I'll watch it, but I'm not going to go out of my way to watch all the other pressers. Like, I didn't watch the Xbox presser. I just watched the Bethesda presser. So, I mean, that's kind of a thing. I don't plan to watch the Nintendo presser tomorrow. Also, because it falls in the middle of my work shift, so I really can't. Um, a tenant, I mean, I get that people go to E3 as a job, but I mean, if you're an outside viewer, the time schedules aren't great. Like... Very true. If Todd talked any longer, I would have had to give up because he was going to speak till like ten o'clock if he wanted to. So, I, you know what, I would appreciate if he just stood up there and talked all night long just about Fallout seventy six. Um, what else was there that was released? There was um, I think well, not released, but I think for me the biggest things in Fallout seventy six is obviously the multiplayer because no kidding. Yeah. Um, and then obviously I think the big thing was this fluidity of the multiplayer that it showed was really impressive to me. The community yeah. building and the whole, I, I love the videos they put up of like the vault tech training videos of how to acquaint yourself with your neighbors. I love that shit. I love how folksy it is now fifties. It is. That's part of like, like I know you love the I, elder scrolls between the two of us. You love the elder scrolls. Yeah. Much more than I do. Um, but for me, I definitely love the retro vibe of fallout. And that, like, duality of the timeline kind of thing. I love that storyline, yeah. so. Um, yeah, and then, um, you know, hearing the presser, uh, obviously, got me a, a tad bit more excited uh, after hearing that this, this game had actually been in the works for almost five years now. Yeah, uh, that it wasn't, like, a brand new thing they were just starting. It was well into yeah. production. I mean, they were showing live game capture last night. That was pretty cool. Yeah, and speaking of live game capture, the the combat mechanics and the way the combat looked, uh, just in that little one v one between the two players, whoever was playing, and uh, you mean P Garvey? P. Garvey. Yeah, By the way, I immediately thought of you when they showed P Garvey. <laughs> yeah, I'm a. Uh, anybody that knows me knows I'm not the biggest fan of Preston Garvey. Uh, <laughs> Another settlement needs your help. Yeah, well, they can fucking die. <laughs> that was great. But, uh, yeah, the combat looked flawless, and uh, it, was, it it got me even more excited just to be able to have to think how I'm going to attack a settlement or if I'm going into loot an area, how many people could actually be in there. It's kind of like PUBG meets Fallout. I have to be wary of everybody around me. Yeah. I did like another big thing out of that, the multiplayer and the fear of people, which I think anybody yeah. playing a multiplayer game has, especially a game like that, like you said, like PUBG or any PvP game. 
was that it's not massively overpopulated servers. We're talking about 12 to 20 people, or 12 to 24. I don't remember the number. I think it was 12 to 20. It was 12 to 20, I believe. 12 to 20 people inhabiting a space four times the size of Fallout 4. And this is something I wanted to touch on. I was thinking about this on the drive home from work today, because I had a longer drive than usual. Um, You know how, like... Okay, so Fallout 3 was a good size game. Yeah. Fallout New Vegas was either a little bit bigger or even about the same size. I think it was about the same size, but it was a little bit bigger. About, I want to say it was about the same size. Yeah. Fallout 4, obviously, was a lot bigger. Yeah, Fallout 4 was... like If people didn't actually play Fallout 4, Fallout 4 was a huge, huge game. But you know what was done really well? And something I think... A, I think people talk about it, but I think for me, I would bring up in a review. They've increased games in size and kept it feeling the same. You don't feel like you're killing, you're losing a lot of time to walking. You don't feel, and not just because of the fast travel system, even on your first explorations. There's enough I wonder things if going. There's going to be fast traveling. I think there could be. I think it would have to do with your entire group voting, though. That yeah. would be how I would operate. That you could, you could fast travel this group, or there's going to be just vehicles you can build, like you can build vertebrates and stuff, which would be cool as shit if we could fly vertebrates. I would love to build a. Uh... Yeah, I would love to build a vertebrate and just, you know, fly around fucking shit up. Um, it'll be interesting to see if the... Because they said this is right after, right? This is right after Reclamation Day, so right after yeah. people are coming out of the vaults. I wonder if the Brotherhood of Steel exists. It probably doesn't. That, I, that is going to be something interesting to see. It'll be interesting to see hearing. where our old all our old friends ended up, like the Enclave and all those people. Because we're more yeah, in the region well, of the Enclave than we were in the region of NCR. True. Well, it's 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 interesting the way he worded it, saying uh, you choose who the protagonists are, you choose the antagonists are. It'd be interesting to see if you could actually. I wouldn't say form certain factions that would come into the games later on. Um, but just to maybe build your own faction for that game. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um. Also, at the same time, it would be cool if I could just say fuck it and be the leader and create the Brotherhood of Steel. Or something like, kind of similar. the original Elder. That be that would be, yeah, definitely. I think, uh, I'm trying to think what else I thought was good. I thought it was cool they're bringing in actual West Virginia folklore. Like the Grafton monster and the Mothman. The Moth, that, I looked it up earlier. It was not the Mothman, that flying thing in the sky. Not the flying thing in the sky, there was a thing sitting on the ground in a forest that had, like, bug eyes in their thing about the... Because there was the Grafton Grafton monster. The Grafton monster, the one with the bug eyes, was the Flatlands uh, monster. Okay. Um, I want to say they're going to bring in Mothman just because, I mean, it's fucking Mothman. Why wouldn't you? It'd be cool, though. I mean, I think it's yeah. just cool, period, that they put in things like the Grafton Monster. I don't believe in any of that stuff, but that's cool that they're they're saying, we're going to give a nod to where this is from. We're going to give a nod to West Virginia itself in Virginia, so. Yeah. But uh, four times the size, dude. Like, holy shit. That's a huge fucking map. That's a huge map. Like, and I mean, like, I'm, you know, no god, what gods do I choose? Um, <laughs> shit. But, uh, you know, a- along with the other creatures, um, there was this big, big bastard that was flying in the sky, uh, burning shit down called the Scorch Beast. And I think it's really cool that they've, other than the Vertibird, they finally introduced a flying, a flying enemy that actually makes you look up, not just dead ahead like a blood bug or a uh, blowfly would. Dude, that looked nuts, dude. That looked fucking nuts. The Scorch Beast? Yeah, like a lot of those monsters look terrifying. Yeah. The, like, the frog, oh my god, fuck that shit, dude. The ants, too. Did I see... Okay, so I might not have seen this correctly. I know I saw the Grafton monster, and it reminded me of the behemoths from Fallout 4. Yeah. Was there a behemoth in that trailer? I don't want to say that. I don't think there was. But I know there were for Super Mutant, so... Yeah. Alright. Yeah. Alright. So I think, but yeah, I think like, I don't know. I think that a big thing for me will be seeing how, um, I don't know how to put this. I'm interested to see if the build function has changed at all. 
Yeah. Like, um, if it'll be any different or if it'll be better or anything like that. From the video, it looked like it might have. Just a little bit. Now, again, um, to go back to the fact that we can build anywhere, that's a big step up, but... Yeah. Uh, what else was there? There was uh, the fact that death in this game is not hardcore it's, Yeah, it's not permadeath. permadeath. Like Rust or like State That would suck. That would suck so bad. Yeah, it's it's not like you're grinding up, you're grinding up, you're grinding up, only to get shot down and lose all your shit. You're, you know, I imagine you'll lose some things when you die, otherwise there'd be no penalty to dying, and I think there always should be. I mean, you, you'll probably be lootable. Kicked. You'll be lootable to a... Yeah. Like, in, I think it's in... It might be World of Warcraft. It might have been World of Warcraft. It's been a little while since I played, but I know in World of Warcraft or some game I played, only certain items in your inventory were lootable when you died. Like, if you yeah. ki if you killed someone, you couldn't take all their stuff, but there was definitely, like, a price to be paid for... You know what I mean? For certain things, so... Yeah. I, I think there should be for a price to dying, because you didn't think it out. Definitely. You know. Got it. Gotta use your brain, dumbass. Uh... But, uh... Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely excited for... This hopefully hella amazing game I definitely think it'll be uh, worthwhile we'll have to yeah. I definitely well, they said it... they're gonna be they said they're gonna be uh, keeping it up to date and maintaining the servers for years to come so hopefully they'll keep updates kind of like they have with Elder Scrolls Online definitely nice. I did like that they said it was gonna be dedicated servers it wasn't outsourcing the servers I think um I don't know what I was going to say. Um, I'm thinking that... Oh, yeah. What edition do you think you're going to pre-order? Uh, I mean, if they order more of the Fallout Power Armor edition, absolutely. That edition. But that's just because I want the fucking helmet. Just because I want to put that on my desk so I can be a badass in my own head. Just, to, just, but, sit, uh... just sit there and think while you're wearing it, like... I'm this close to being Brotherhood of Steel. This close, guys. Uh, no, but it's it's it it the uh, obviously the Power Armor Edition comes with the Tricentennial Edition as well. Um, oh, does it? Is that what it said? Yeah. It, it, uh, I guess yeah. It would come with the Ultimate Edition of everything. So yeah, with the Power Armor Edition comes the base game with Tricentennial Steelbook. Uh, full scale wearable T51 power armor helmet, which is my favorite version of the power armor. Glow in the dark world terrain map, which it fucking glows in the dark. 24 collectible follow up figurines. Side note the quote of the conference by Todd Howard yeah. it fucking glows in the dark. It glows in the dark. And then the uh, Fallout 76 edition bonus in game items, which contains. Tricentennial power armor customizations for the T-51, T-45, T-60, and the X-01 power armors. The Tricentennial weapon customization, customization for the 10mm pistol, the hatchet, the laser rifle. Spectacularly handsome Vault Boy mascot head. That sounds sexy. The patriotic Uncle Sam outfit. Also sounds sexy. Celebratory Fallout Boy saluting emotes. So I guess we're going to have emotes in the game? There were. There definitely was. Because there was at one point when the guy, like, they were they taking... Were the they took and... Yeah, when they killed um, one of the big monsters, you could take pictures of your crew after you did it. Yeah. And they were doing, like, the Charlie's <laughs> Angels pose. <laughs> yep. Uh, as well as the first class Tricentennial Workshop posters. So I guess that is for when you're building your base. And then the commem commemorative photo frame, also probably for when you're building your base. But, uh, yeah, I'll probably go with the uh, Power Armor Edition myself. If, if they, they order more reorder it yeah if they don't order more of that i would probably go you know what's funny if you did the tricentennial edition right <laughs> and the pit boy 2000 mark six you'd be just about the same price for yeah. both and that pit boy kit looks really cool so it does but i mean let's be real here i'm not getting the fucking pit boy that's up the fucking helmet that's just how this is gonna work very true, very true. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I guess that about wraps it up. Yeah, that's gonna, 
I think that covers everything we need to. Didn't mean to do that. Um, do what? What you do? I clicked the wrong thing to build, but it's whatever. Um, no! <laughs> yeah, I think that's gonna wrap it up. I think that's. We'll talk more about the rest of E3 at the at next week's episode. Just for right now, we hadn't seen all of E3, so that's the hope and the prayer is to get more information as time goes on. Yeah. Um, obviously, as Fallout 76 gets more hyped and more updated, we'll be doing that as well. Um, we hope you turn in next time. We will see you in the wasteland sometime. Thank you, and goodbye. <laughs>